What's going on, people? Back at it again. We got us another moon magnetic field connection. Got to, got to fill in a couple of the big dots here. There's been some questions on how a magnetic field gets created with the sun, and we're also protected by that very same sun with the magnetic field. So we got, we got us a problem. We got. You go two birds in the bush and one magnetic field in the hand, so to speak. But what we'll do is try to make some sense of it all, okay? Now, it could take us a thousand years to get back on the rail uh, in the physics world because unbeknownst to everybody on the planet, our foundation in the physics world is all wrong. That's right, people. I know you heard it first here. We got some big problems, big problems. Now, if we can straighten this stuff out and get everybody back on the rails again, maybe your kids' kids won't have to dig through this nonsense and try to straighten it out 60 years from now, all right? Or maybe 120 years from now. Anyways, here's the accepted, uh, you know, mainstream physics explanation. We got the big giant blob over there, the sun, which is about as big as my pinky, right? And uh, because that's, you know, the, the depth perception here is all wrong. That, we're just going to beat up on this picture for a few seconds. Stay with me. A few seconds. All right. Sun, ionized particles, coronal mass ejection, charged particles, whatever you want to call it, um, coming into the Earth. we got the mother spider here protecting the Earth. And the particles go around. We don't get barbecued. Okay. Wrong. All wrong. Okay, right in between this doodah and that doodah, these little, the little eyeballs here, is what? The way the moon rotates. Okay, that's the moon's rotation in that little zone right there. The moon is what's causing the subatomic flow particles that create the magnetic field on the planet. Okay, all right. Just wanted to drive that home. So we'll get back to this a little later, but that's basically in a nutshell what's going on here. Uh, mainstream's explanation is these charged particles are coming in, they're flowing in through the poles, magically creating the magnetic field, but not barbecuing us at the same time. So it's a little far-fetched if you ask me. Someone needs to look at it. All right, here's the uh, typical polar wander with the magnetic field up top. Uh, guarantee that it, it follows the uh, 1260 year uh, Soros moon cycle. But, uh, you know, nobody's actually taking a look at that, but uh, probably just me. But anyways, you get pull a wanderer up here, and it's all based on the moon's metonic cycle. Um, the other thing is, you got the core, you got the magma, magma chambers, the lithosphere, the stenosphere, and all these other spheres under the air. And then, uh, you know, obviously the surface of the planet. Spin it around, just minding its own business. And here's a uh, nice gif on the magnetic field, the flow, the flux, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the particles are coming in. This is wrong. The particles are coming in from both sides. The uh, photons, electrons, protons, neutrons, utons, croutons, and uh, gravitons uh, bond at the poles, and then they, they uh, repel each other coming out of the uh, latitudes. The latitudes inside, they flow inside back to the poles. Some of them make it to the outside. That's why you're uh, a little lighter on the... Uh, the equator because there is an ejection um, process of a subatomic world at that particular location and that's why you have rings of Saturn and Jupiter and this that and the other thing and also that's why you have the, uh, the the moon is in this little little zone here six degrees off a plane and it is accentuating and pulling the subatomic uh, world out and creating the the flows back to the poles and giving us our um, you know our magnetic field. All right, here it is again. Uh, electric universe. Uh, you know, you guys you can jump in on this if you want. You can call it magnetism. You can call this static electricity. Whatever you want to call it, that's creating a magnetic field. Um, I've I've looked a lot. I've read a lot about the. Uh, Electronic universe and uh, you know, they got a lot of, they got some points. I've got to give it to them. They got some points They got to straighten out a few things, you know, they're way ahead of their theory than the flat earth is just saying 
But, um, you know, so, so is mainstream. Mainstream hasn't got it all figured out either. I mean, it, like I said, there's, there's some major problems with the building blocks that was, we've uh, built our foundations on, or built our homes on. We've built the homes on the foundations, so, so on and so forth. There, anyway, here's the moon. Here's the Earth spinning through. There's a gravitational field in between here, okay? All right. We're gonna, uh, we've got a couple of gifts. They're pretty neat. Hopefully they're coming out better. i got a new camera there. It's supposed to... Uh, be doing a heck of a lot better, which it is. Anyways, got the uh, the the Earth is made up of obviously liquid and solid matter on the on the um, above the ellipsoid or above the crust, and uh, you have water. Now water is like a neutral uh, signature. It's a neutral signature in the gravitational world, uh, subatomic world, and the land mass is a positive signature. Okay, so you have you have a higher flow of subatomic matter flowing through solid matter, okay? I know it doesn't sound right, but it's it's much more, there's much more, um, uh, you know, magnetism and activity going on in solid matter than there is in, uh, you know, just the uh, Earth's oceans. All right, that be, I guess it's gonna make a point a little later, but you got a high tide over here, you got the moonless high tide over here. Uh, in the book, by book, uh, there is something about the moon, I'll explain that, um, you know, uh, this this whole, you know, gravity has, a self-balancing mechanism in it. Got that copyrighted from 2012 with equations. It's uh, you know it's pretty simple stuff. Uh, 90 degrees from the high tides, you got low tide. Okay, so this is like a geosynchronous motor, you know, or generator, whatever you, which, whichever way you want to call it, that's creating the magnetic field. All right, that protects us from the sun's solar radiation. See a typical motor here, um, you know, DC generator rather. Just to give you an idea of what's going on, you know, it just it's three phase, it changes, rotates, you know, you get a magnetic field, positive, negative, positive, negative. Um, that's not really what, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's like just, just to give you an idea of how things work in our world with generators and, and uh, motors. Everything's run on magnetism one way or another in that particular science. Here's Jupiter, it's got like 76 moons, I believe, and... Um, it's got a magnetic field, big magnetic field. It's got uh, Saturn, same thing, big magnetic field. They both have a, uh, you know, rings out, out that are out in the, uh, you know, the plane right off of the uh, equators. And uh, it's a rotational energy force there that, that creates those uh, rotational gravitational signature that creates the rings. But we're not here about the rings. We're here about the magnetic field. Now, our mainstream is telling us as early as yesterday that Jupiter's magnetic field is created by a solid hydrogen core, okay? I mean, how many Kelvin below zero you got to have solid hydrogen? But I guess it doesn't matter. But, um, ten pages published in some of the best, you know, uh, journals, scientific journals on the planet, and not one mention of the moon, not one mention of 76 moons. They got the pay the, the moons on the pay no never mind list. Like the moons just are there. They have they have no subatomic uh, you know effect on anything. They don't do anything. You know they, they, you know it's, it's it's just crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. You know how can you have a magnetic field theory with seventy six moons and not even address the uh, the moons buzzing around this planet? It's just beyond everything. I day to try to make it up. All right. You know, the, the mainstream, they get some hard bark on them. You know what I mean? There's some hard bark. It's just, you just, you just got to start throwing moons at these people, literally, you know? All right, so my point is, the reason Jupiter and the moon, I mean the moon, uh, Earth, and the other planets in our solar system that have magnetic fields is because the moons, all right? It's the moon's drag at the at the atomic level that creates the flow that makes that creates the mag, magnetic fields okay that protect the uh, planets from uh, solar radiation and so on and so forth all right here's another gif on what's going on again the moon is right in here you know the moon's right in here it's spinning through the moon the moon pulls these subatomic particles out here and they flow back into the poles they flow back in the north pole flow, flow back in the south pole so they the magnetism, even if it wasn't magnetism, it's a subatomic particle flow 
that's being caused, you can call it, call it magnetism, whatever you want to call it, gravitism, uh, who knows, gravinetics, gravinetic, atons, I got a bunch of words in my head. But anyways, it's, it's enough to create a subatomic flux of energy that can trap and hold these charged particles coming in from the sun and, and deflect them and prevent them from making it their way all the way to the earth and barbecuing everybody on the planet. Um, uh, from what I understand, the moon does have some kind of a, 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 a magnetic field. It's not strong, but uh, it's, it's fairly weak. There's, um, you know, some theories that it had been stronger in the past. But, um, you know, who knows? I, you know, I, I, you have to do your own research on that. This guy, uh, this me on the piece of plateau, pointing at the big white thing in the sky, the moon. Saying, the moon is what operates the pyramids. Pyramids are lenses. Going off topic here, but point I wanted to make was this is a topographical uh, view of the planet right uh, positive neutral okay the oceans are neutral gravitational signature and uh, the, the uh, continents are positive all right all right now in my book there is something about the moon there are two signatures the earth pull, that put that the earth puts out excuse me beep 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 about a boo there's two signatures. You got ice age signature, but you got four phase, right? It's a four phase signature that the pause, the uh, continents um, actually uh, bend space time all the way out past the moon. Okay, so you know we got our five five mile high mountains, you know uh, Everest, and you know the giant you know, mountains in Central South America, the North America, Asia. Uh, these things, these things deflect. This, the uh, gravitational field on the planet. So, you know, we, we always get a picture of the uh, the Earth, and it's in its nice, nice little cocoon there. And um, uh, what do you call it there? It's just, just sitting in there and, and just spinning around and everything's wonderful. No, no. We are, in effect, deflecting, putting out a gravitational signature based on our land and water mass that's going out way past the moon into the solar system. All right? You heard it here first, YouTube University. All right, this is the uh, three-phase three phase signature from the interglacial or water edge, 2012. Actually, I think it's like 2012 and a half, 13. Anyways, yeah, Earth three-phase gravity land water signature interacting with the moon's planetary gravity gears. Now, uh, get, get, get my book if you're interested in this stuff. The, uh, you know, the moon has uh, five or six high-density gravity gravitational zones. That are actually gears that mesh up with the gravity gear that the Earth puts out. Okay, and there's reasons for that, but when I'm, I'm sticking with the magnetic field right now. All right, here's a great gif on what happens when you take the moon away from a planet. Here's Earth without a moon. All right, here's the moon. You know, I mean, you know, it's it's just the, uh, the procession's gone. You're just sitting there wobbling. You're you're all over the place. You're you know, North Pole's on the south. The South Pole's on the north. You just flip flopping all over the place. Now, it, when we had the War of the Worlds back when uh, back when we were bebopping from Russia, uh, you know, Russia from uh, Mars to the uh, Earth, Mars actually had a large moon. It's now currently traveling behind Mars in the same orbit. Three million miles miles behind Mars is a debris field that used to be its large moon that gave it its gravitational field. It's um, it's not gravity, you know, some of its gravitational, it gave it its gravitational energies like we got the tidal forces and it gave it its magnetic field that allowed it to have an atmosphere and so on and so forth. A lot of the temples in Egypt uh, talk about this also. Uh, there's a lot of gifts, a lot of, um, you know, hieroglyphs and, and um, there's, there's, some, there's, some, uh, there's some stuff down there about living on Mars. Anyways, long story short, just give you a visual of what happens when we don't have a moon. Now, moving on over, we got us a gravitational signature of Earth. Of course, they don't put the moon here to tell us where it is in the metonic cycle and how they, how it affects the high gravitational fields. But you can see the high gravitational fields right here on the planet, on the continents, and there's the, these these actually create signatures that go way out past the moon, probably go past Mars, you know. Uh, you know the orbit of Mars, so they're they're um, you know we're all one big giant. Uh, it's like the Mayan clock there, one big giant uh, 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 gear, if you will. 
and um, synchronous gear system. But anyways, that's kind of going off topic. Um, again, this is the subatomic flow that creates the magnetic field on the planet. Yes, we have an iron core. Yes, we have a, um, a liquid iron core. Iron's really great for magnetism. Yes, agree. But you still need you still need the moon to have have this uh, have this the uh, rotational speed and um, you know to flash the magnetic field you know so uh, again the the way you kill a magnet is you heat it up you you put a magnet under a, a extensive heat it's it's the it's so much um, resistance created in the in the material the flow. Uh, the electrons can't flow in line because that's how magnetism works. It's, everything's in line, right? So you, you heat up a magnet, it's, uh, you, you, you ramp up the uh, resistance, and the, the magnetism's gone. It literally just disappears down to a fraction of what it is. So riddle me this. If you got something that um, you got steel or molten, molten uh, you know, uh, whatever you call it, existence, it's liquid, then you got a solid one, and, you know, who knows what the temperatures are down there. They're off the charts, but... In theory, there shouldn't be any magnetism at all. That's why I'm, you know, that's why it needs. We need to step back, get back, take take a couple of pages back off the book, and look at this and say, yeah, maybe there's something else going on. Yes, there is something else going on. It's the moon. This is just the visual of your, the visual of what uh, you see the uh, the phases of the moon. Good uh, good gif. There's a liquid uh, liquid core, solid iron core. Now you take a DC motor, you put a battery on it, turn it on. You got the rotor going, one, you know, the, the, the rotor's turning, you throw it up in the air, the armature's, the casing of the armature's going to go one way and the rotor's going to go the opposite way. That's what's going on here. You got, this is things like a DC motor. The, uh, the core's going counterclockwise and the earth is going clockwise or vice versa. It depends on where you are, the uh, North Pole, the South Pole. Again, this is uh, kind of a visual of um, subatomic exchange in a, in a regular DC motor. You got the magnets here, they got the rotor coming around, pulling itself in there, releasing, you got the flux. And if you can envision a moon over here creating all this atomic flow and you know creating the, uh, the rotation of the solid iron core, um, you know, that's, that's basically what's going on. So in a nutshell, this is the uh, S, P and S waves. This is how they, with their, uh, you know, they put out the P and S waves, and um, they have um, detectors, and they can, you know, basically paint the picture of what's going on at the subatomic level inside the planet. Uh, a couple of books here, Pyramid Gravity Force, my first book. I had this dead, dead to right here, man. This is like perfect. I was way out in the front row on this one, but you got the core, you got the moon. The, the volcano, the pyramids, pyramids are lenses, they lens off the gravitational field of the moon, off topic, but nevertheless, gives you a good visual. And again, the uh, theoretical physics that I'm discussing is in the latter half of this book. Um, there is something about the moon written with uh, Wendy H. Salter over in London Town. My name is John Chaunty, me, John Chauncey here. Here's the uh, website if you want to check it out. If you're a Prime member, you can get that book for free on Amazon. Both these books are available on Amazon. And uh, anyways, I think that's about it. All right, people. Peace out. Um, what else can I tell you? You know, just keep it real, you know. Remember, when the head comes away from the neck, it's over.